And it's episode 123 of the Rise and Grind podcast. Yes, your boy sir. Roderick in the building. Yes, sir. Jakari is in the building. Yeah, man. Feeling good, man. You going to bring the jaw back? The what? The jaw. Oh. I just, sometimes I just say it yeah, like that. Yeah, I'm like, okay. Yeah. No, nah, Jakari. Jakari. <laughs> okay, I, didn't, I didn't know we was bringing it. Nah, nah. It's, it's whatever, you know. A radio Roger. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. You need the, uh, the what's it called? The boom box. Yeah, we never going back there, dude. Um. <laughs> But yeah, man, welcome. We'd like to thank the listenership. Um, thank Assurance uh, DNA. Yep. Thank Paternity University. Thank Apple. Um, we in the building, man. How man, you feel? Feeling good, dog. Feeling good. New you setting. Know, new <laughs> you, you see it. I was about to say, we just talked about it last week. We decided, you know, come on, let's hit them with it. Yeah, yeah man. By this time, they already seen the full video, too. The Diet Coke full full edition. Yeah, man. We had to... We had to turn into good music, good good podcasts. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's <laughs> we just we trying coming. to get signed to good podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to make it out the hood, man. Nah, for real. Um, how you feeling, man? But yeah, I feel good. How dog. was your week, man? My week was great, man. So, um, just like I mentioned last week, man, just high spirits, dog. I'm, I'm blessed. I feel great. Um, it's a lot of positivity in my life right now, so I'm just trying to, you know, keep that up. So, um, my week was good. Work, I told you, I've started. You know my my new position, right? So just training for that basically is what what I'm doing now. So just bless, man. Just bless. You know things are moving in the right direction for me. Okay, you know doing the same thing, kind of. Well, I'm not in the the same position that you're in, but you know work week, you know just regular for me. But uh, podcast moving forward, new studio in here. Yeah, That's the main man. priority. Um, if you're looking at us right now, you've been with the podcast from the very beginning. It's a large step up. We've been in like this is our third setting. Yeah, man, we came a long way with this this part. I was just thinking about that recently too, because I was looking at the uh, the YouTube videos. You know, we still got you know episode one up there. It was like two two three episodes. You know, you did by yourself. Where's your D Rock? You feel me? So I took just, some pictures. You know, some yeah, of the old just podcasts. comparing it, man. We have came a long way. It's a blessing, bro. It's a blessing. But you know, if you this is God, you know, what I'm saying I'd be feeling like Kanye, like for real, like oh yeah, no, like God did this. Like once you put it out there, it uh you can create it. You know what I'm saying? I say these exact words about this. I just say it like you say it to yourself, I say it to myself. No yeah. God did this. Not like for real. Uh this is the beginning. So Yeah, that just go for anybody though. Any anybody out there chasing a goal, you know, if you got a passion, whatever, just go for it. And the world will like align to you know, to you, basically. Absolutely, you, you can feel me? you can make it happen. You you can. It sounds corny to say that because you yeah. hear people say it your whole life. You hear people win awards and say shit like that. Mm-hmm. You really can like make it happen though. Mm-hmm. If you can see, you can achieve it, bro. Yeah, real um, talk, real talk. And even at this point, this is still this is still the ground f- for us. Mm-hmm. Like I don't even mean it like a, a bad way, but we got a long way to go even from here. Yeah, we still got goals. We we just getting started. Yeah. Um. So yeah, <clears throat> you got anything you wanted to get into before? Uh, one thing I want to see if you had uh, read up on it. The uh, what's his name, Jesse Smollett. <sighs> Jesse Smollett. <laughs> All right, I was a, I was a firm believer when this first came out. Okay, and the story was going, and Jesse had the world like behind him. Right. Right. I swear to God, from the very beginning, I was like, no, he's he's cap. <laughs> There's something wrong about this story. Number one, like, <clears throat> what got me was the beginning of his story. He was at two. It was two a.m. Mm-hmm. in Chicago. <laughs> he's walking the streets. It's cold and snow and shit outside. He's eating Subway at two a.m. He just left the Subway. <laughs> That's what he said. Okay. Um, he runs into two white Trump supporters <laughs> at 2 a.m. that are also walking the streets of Chicago at night wearing MAGA hats. <laughs> Odd. You heard the setting. Um, they beat him, tie a noose around his neck. <laughs> <laughs> now that it's not real, like, this is crazy if you think about it. Like, this is the story he told. Right, they tied a noose around his neck, right? Right. And then, I mean, they beat him up, tied a noose around his neck, and then they left. And he walked home and called the police. <laughs> He still had the sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> it's still together. It's not even messed up in the bag, packaged nicely. Just as a black man mm-hmm. in my head, never in a million years, if two white men did beat me up and tie a noose around my neck, 
would I walk all the way home with the noose still around my neck? <laughs> he got home with the noose on his neck. Right, right. He, um, did. he did. Went to the hospital. Yeah, they did the whole thing. He had two men. Of course, they came out, beat him up. They they weren't white, like he said. They were two of his own, like black partners. Yeah, partners that he hired. They were actors, right? Something like that. Yeah, I can't yeah, really um, remember too much, but yeah. It all went bad. He called himself the gay Tupac. Wow. I don't remember that. He called himself the gay Tupac. Um, then it turned out to all be a sham. Here he is now. He got sentenced to like, what, 150 days in, in yeah, prison or yeah. not prison, in a jail, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, about six months, whatever. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to bring it up because it was, you know, funny. And, um, you know, we, we used to watch The Empire when we was um, in high school. I remember we, we really stopped like our freshman year. College. Yeah, I remember like. I remember when we stopped. Yeah, we don't have to get into no, it. Yeah, I just, but like there was just, there was a point when we stopped. Yeah, we stopped watching Empire. We stopped watching Empire. Jamal. And J- he was the reason we stopped watching it. Yeah. For sure, but um, one thing I wanted to bring up just before we move on his, because uh, he just got sentenced, like you said, so it was videos of, of him in court. Did you hear what he said? He was like, he was like, I'm not suicidal. If something oh, happens yeah. to me, like I'm not suicidal. Blah blah blah. I was just like, he's on suicide watch right now, though. But yeah, but I'm like, bro, is this situation is it that bad for him to be on suicide watch? Like, Absolutely I'm not, I'm not, not trying to lessen nothing. I'm really asking, like, um, for him, it is not in this. Like not in like this situation. 150 days in prison is obviously cake to some other people, but right. like and that's kind um, of what I was thinking. And like I said, his his crime it wasn't like usually when people on suicide watch for, for some bullshit, like some sexual assault type shit, you know, molesting. So I'm not saying like he can't be on suicide watch, but I just didn't think his shit was as crucial as it is. Maybe I'm wrong. No, the the way I need like that I need you to think about it. Okay, is think about it like. You told you're a well respected person. Yeah. Think about it in your eyes. You carry around where we're from. You're a well respected person. Right. You tell the entire community something, and they believe you, and they stand behind you in solidarity, like mm. protesting behind you. Right. And it comes out that you're a big liar. <laughs> that's the that's the um you know the feeling like. When like you get caught in a lie and your skin starts burning automatically, you start sweating and shit. That just doesn't stop for months. <laughs> yeah, you might be I on just, suicide watch. I just yeah, you make a good. Everybody point. against you. You've lied to everybody. Right. Nobody believes you anymore. Nobody trusts you. No credibility. Right. Probably lost a lot of friends, even family over this. Yeah, I lost my lost my job. His job for show. Sure. Empire the show ends. Went down, yeah. Yeah, um, come on now. You're yeah, responsible yeah. for a lot of people's downfall. Okay, okay. That's that's a good point. The last words you said, the last sentence, that you responsible for other people's downfall, because I wasn't thinking like that. Um, but that's just crazy. I was just like, damn, he on suicide watch, bro. Yeah, no, I can see it. Mad believable. If you think about it and like, you, if you did it. Yeah. I was just thinking that he could come back from that. You called yourself the gay Tupac. You can't come back from that. <laughs> so, like, he don't get no more shows, no more acting gigs. That's what she's saying. I'm thinking, Not like, a, like, bro could come back from this. Like, yeah. No. I lied. Hell no. I lied. No. He's no. not coming back from this. Right. Not a list type of work. Okay. He does the cookout, who brought the potato salad <laughs> to the cookout right. type of movies from here on out. Now his sister Journey, like, she's fine. Like she's she's just fine. His family's just fine. Okay. Um, no, he's done though. <laughs> um, I'm glad you actually brought that up. Yeah, I got you, bro. Uh, was there something else you wanted to get into before that? Nah, that was really the most important one. I think I, I was to gonna talk about Jesse Smollett, but uh, I didn't put it on the list. We can get the music though. Let's get it. We started with that at the beginning of it. You heard it. Benny the Butcher, Tana Talk 4. Yes, sir. Wow. Uh, that's the first thing I had to say about it. When it came out, <clears throat> this was another one that it kind of took Benny's actual promotion for me to like remember that it was coming out. Mm-hmm. But it was the first album that I actually got to. I, I spun. I got the Dirks first. I'll say that. But I didn't listen to it. I listened to the first track and then I saw Tana Talk 4. And I was like, OK, we're going to Benny first. Um, Benny put on a show. Benny put on a clinic like a like a forty or fifty night from Kobe. Like that's the type of shit that, like that Benny recently, does. LeBron yeah. put up fifty six. Uh, was it like fifty six or some yeah, shit like fifty that? twice in one week. 
At 37. That man is, I was going to say, that man is 37. <laughs> Think about this. You're doing that against 19-year-olds in this right, game. Bro. I mean, we need to appreciate Braun, bro. Braun only got maybe like three, four years. If you just think about it, like realistically, because he's still trying to wait for his son and shit. You think Bronny comes out next year? Um, what? How old is Bronny? Eligible to come out next year. But you can come out after, like, after college now again, right? I mean, after high school again, right? No, nah. you still got to do one year of college. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Um, you can go overseas. Well, then. This will be his first year in college uh, going into this September, I think. I thought he was like a junior still, bro. No lie. You sure? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know either. Yeah, yeah, I don't I'm know. pretty sure that he's going to, like, he's a senior this year. Okay. I might be wrong. Okay. For sure, no. Go ahead and finish. So you were saying Benny was like he put up 50 points with this album. No, no. Hold on. Hold on. You you think he comes out and plays with his dad? That's what he says. He, he does one year of college, yes, and then go to the league. If he's if he. Depending on how he progresses in in these next two to three years, like if he's cold, if he can make it, right. Barney we'll, is gonna do one year and be gone. We'll get to Benny in a second, but I want to stay here for a second. Okay. Let's keep it a buck. Right. He's not cold. You crazy? He's not go to the league in one year cold. Right. Not right now. That's why I say I think he a junior, bro. I think he like seventeen. I think he still got one more year of high school. Say he's a senior. He does not go to the league after his freshman year. Right now, but you you still have. I don't to care season. how good he gets in your freshman year. You're not going to leave, bro. If he have a crazy ass freshman year, yes, he could go. But I'm saying right now, no, I don't see that. But he still has two more years before we even see that. Before we even see him go to college, so he could get better. The only thing that I think about in my head is LeBron is gonna. LeBron wants to play with his son so bad that he's gonna push his son out of college too early, and his son's gonna fall. We'll see. Jeffrey, Jordan. Two Did players. Jeffrey ever make it to the league? Nah. Yeah, I don't Jeff. think so. <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> I think Marcus was the one I actually meant to say. Marcus is the one. He went to Florida. Back to Benny, man. <laughs> yeah. My fault. Go ahead. Um, where were you at with it? No, you were still going. You were saying he was like, it was like a 50 point. Oh, yeah, night. it was like it's like a 40 or 50 point night from Kobe or LeBron, something like that. He's going he's gonna to kill it every single time. Uh, we talked about it before. There was 14 tracks, we yeah. said. Every single track smoked. Um, that 12, track, 12. Weekends at Perry's or Weekends in Perry's. Uh, is it Weekends at Perry's? Weekends in the Perry's. In the Perry's, my bad. I actually need to get that. Uh, that's that's the best song on the album to me. One of the best songs I've heard, actually, in a minute. You can tell Alchemist did it. Um, but I think he talks about Alchemist on it. Um, there's tracks with Conway. Even though, like, do you not feel tension somewhere in there? Like, I feel like there's some tension somewhere. No, I don't think so. The Tyson versus Ali, you didn't think you think it's tension? No, not just in that track. I feel like there's some there's some tension that needs to be asserted, like between Conway and Benny. Bro, no, I don't think. I don't think it's actually any problems between them. I think the the industry is doing it. Okay. You didn't hear the end of the weekends in Paris when he said, I'm West's best investment, but that's between me and you? Yeah. Okay. I don't think that's a shot. Okay. <laughs> Come on, bro. Don't okay. do that, bro. Don't I, do that. I feel like I've been feeling it for a long time. Even Man. up here in like the first part of the album, I'm like, oh, are we going to hear Conway? I didn't look at the track list. I just played it through. Okay. I'm like, are we going to hear Conway? Are we going to hear Conway? Are we going to hear Conway? Man, so look, I don't think it's between them. I think the industry, because it's a lot of shit that was going on with, uh, with Dev Jam. And I don't want it to be anything between them at all. It was some shit that was going on with the label, Dev Jam, I think, or some shit that happened. So I feel like the, the media, and he even rapped about it. He was like, why y'all trying to pin us against each other you i hear that I'm too but i'm like fuck and the tyson versus ali song like he yeah. mentioned that so i was just like that's what it's about basically right, it's right, about right. them just let us both be great type shit so i think it's the outside bro i think in house they good i pray they are i don't want yeah, to see no, them like, not together i just feel like maybe maybe their raps like just come off wrong sometimes yeah i can understand why you say that and i'm glad you brought it up because they Notice it as well. You know what I'm saying? It's a yeah. topic. It's it's definitely a topic. Um, but overall, bro, I feel the same way you feel about this tape. Benny, 
is just one of the best rappers in the game. Period. You know, I'm putting Point people blank, like I'm putting my frat. He's still my favorite people. rapper in this game. Like right between now. him and Conway, but he's still, of course, yeah. yeah. So I just think with this tape, you said you was putting your frat. Yeah, my frat brothers. Like I've been putting niggas on. Like bro, Benny is like that. Like, yeah, I've been talking to a lot of people. Like yeah, Benny is like he's one of the best rappers out, bro. Yeah, and niggas got it. Even Conway too. Like they whole group, one of the best. You ne- they are three of bro. Like they got the it all in there. Like the out. best rap, the best versatility, yes. art, artistic style, bro. Like they are some of the best niggas out right now. Like no question, diamonds in the rough right you now. Know what like I'm it's crazy. They're like we are living in a different time. So like. Obviously, they're not making songs for the females or making songs to be like hot. Yeah, but we're those, talking about rap. Nigga. Those are the best rappers in yeah, the game. I ain't, even, I ain't talking about no radio hits. No, yeah, I'm talking about that's yeah. why it hasn't caught on to the yeah, general yeah, public. Yeah. No, yeah, I know what you're explaining. I'm just getting my point out there. No, like, yeah, absolutely. Like, those are the best rappers in the game. We listen to music, nigga. That is what is respected in the true essence of rap. Like, that is a rapper's favorite rapper. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, sounds good, man. Um, I'm a, I'm gonna be playing this more as this week goes on. Absolutely. Um, I didn't get to listen to it as much as I wanted to before we came in to record, but uh, definitely this week I'm gonna be playing this whole from start to finish, bro. Like for real. Yeah, man. Um, you ready to move on? Yeah. Let's get into the big shit. Oh wait, no, we still got another one. Dave East. Mm-hmm. Um, how did I get here? I don't think you you didn't tap yeah, into didn't this yet. It. Um, I just heard the one song, the the one with Music Soul Chat. We played that in pre production. Uh, that that one's sliding, but y'all haven't got a chance to listen to Davies shit. Yeah, Davies, he's done it again, guys. Sorry, <laughs> he, he always does. Um, I haven't. My last favorite album from him was like 2018. It was P3, but this one, this is another one of those. Um, he got Met the Man on the intro. Mm. Um, of course, the one that I I sent was uh. It has music Soul Child on it. I'm trying to see who else is on here. Kalen for real, for real. From, from yeah. the D. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's on it. Um <clears throat> Anthony Hamilton. It's a good it's a good album. It's really good. He's actually on the same kind of spectrum mm-hmm. that the Gazelda rappers are on. And I've said for a long time that had Dave East been in a different time period, he would have been one of the hottest niggas out. But he's he's right where he's supposed to be. I think that's what we had an argument on. Um on the pod one time because one of y'all either you or Hop was like he's right where he's supposed to be because this mm-hmm. is this is the era for him to make bread in. Yeah, yeah, I think I may have said that it may have been hot, but um, but I agree. Um, definitely a well respected rapper out here. Davies is another one. I'm glad you brought that up because I was gonna bring it up. That nigga can rap. Like sometimes you just gotta give it to these people. Like bro, these are rappers. Right. I yeah. don't care about who is on the top of the charts. Who sell more? Who got who? Who on a song? Like when you know niggas can put these these bars together, bro. You have to respect it. Absolutely, and you can see it in rap the same way I was talking about Griselda, like the yeah. rappers' favorite rappers. The intro, like I said, the Method Man yeah, intro. Method Man. Yeah. The last I didn't even I forgot about after P three he did the tape with Styles P. Like I the game I respect. That. I think I remember Dave that. East. Yeah, yeah, so definitely, definitely. But yeah, I'm gonna get to that. I told you in pre production. Um, you know, sometimes we'd be like, yeah, I'm, I'm listening to it. Nah, bro, I'm gonna really listen yeah, to no, Davies. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. This shit is really good. Like, you yeah. should actually tune into My it. Thanks. I'm gonna play it for sure. Um, now we can really get into it. Smart. Little dirt. Seven two two zero. Yep. This is crazy. This album was. This album lived up to the hype, like I thought. We knew yeah. Dirk was on the way. Um, we just didn't know exactly when he was gonna drop. Then Kanye said he was dropping at a certain time. He didn't drop. Neither did Dirk. Um. <clears throat> we finally got Dirk. What do you think? Um, I think it's a really good tape, man. I think it sounds good all the way through. Um, it's not my favorite Dirk tape. I'm not going to come out and say, like, oh, this is the best shit he's ever dropped. Nothing like that. I don't think it's, um, like, his best so far. Just it's too new for me to say that. But this shit sounds good as hell. No, I it sounds I have, great. I don't have no complaints about this Dirk album. No complaints at all. I'm not going to say right off the rip because of course i've only heard it i think twice this isn't uh, i'm not gonna say it's the best i'm not gonna say it's not the best this is great from dirt like this is great music let me let me go to the actual album you heard it on the intro that we played one of those two that was uh what happened to virgil but um great album how many tracks are on this 
17. 17, yep. <clears throat> I'm trying to think. He really did this one basically by himself. There was no baby feature on this one. So, I'm glad you brought that yeah, up. Yeah, I, I think so, that's on purpose. All right, all right, okay. So, I'm, I'm going to get into this. So, um, like I said, but I want to just mention some songs real quick. See, right. see what you was feeling. So, I like Golden Child, number five. Mm hmm of course, the the one with Future. I feel like Future snapped on that hoe. That Future track is crazy. Um, I like Barbarian and... The Summer Walker track. I like that. Yeah, yeah. That one is good, too. Hold on, hold on. I like Grow Up, Keep It On Speaker. It's like a two-part song, mm -hmm. number 10. Oh, now. my gosh. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 What's wait, up, wait, bro? wait. You good? Grow Up, Keep It On Speaker. I don't know what about that song. Dog, that hoe is... The shit feels it's, 2012, 13 ish. Like, I Bro, don't know what it is. It's like, the beat. I think, you know how the 808s, it's like scientifically, like it hit a part in your body when you hear it. It's something about the drums on that song, bro. I'm about to do it, y'all. <laughs> What's up? I'm about to do it. I'm sorry. I had to do it. We finally, we finally might get back here, Corey. What's up, man? When a nigga switched his track like Drake, <laughs> like the two part, the mm -hmm. splits in between the track, now nah, I get me every time. <laughs> No, give me every time. Dog, that song is hard. That's my favorite one, I think, so far. And then I like smoking and thinking the very next track as well, number 11. Uh, mm -hmm. What Happened to Verge was my favorite track yeah, so far. Yeah. That's going to be the I hit bring on that the one album. Up on purpose, yeah. Obviously, you know that's the one. But yeah, the Grow Up, Keep It On Speaker. I actually forgot about it when you said it. Um, yeah. Blacklist, you don't like that one? Oh, yeah, I like Blacklist. I this like entire Blacklist. album is good if, yeah, you, if good. you're not even... Sound good. If you're not gathering what we're doing. Um, except... <laughs> okay. I love Schmark. I love you, Schmark. I love you, Schmark. Okay, go ahead. Please go don't ahead. come get nobody. We know you're a goon at <laughs> We know. We know. Um, you heard the outro? Do you not remember me saying two episodes ago? I was like, I don't know how Dirk is coming. Cause it's cool. I got you. No, I've heard it. I brought it up a couple episodes ago this track because it had already been out before the album dropped. So when AHA dropped, Okay, this, I must not. I must not have heard out, this. And then another song was out, and I had said, "I said, how do you think Dirk is coming on this album?" And you said whatever, and I said, "Okay, I don't know," because I heard that song. I heard that song a couple weeks ago. I'm like, bro, what the hell is that? No, I didn't hear this. Yeah, that was out before the album came out. I don't. I don't. I wouldn't have known how he was coming mm -hmm. right off the bat if I heard that either. Um, Yep. That's why I said that shit But obviously that don't matter Because the album is out now But go ahead What I was going to say about this track is How pissed off do you think Lil Nas X gets When he when he hears this, this track And finds out he didn't get called for the feature <laughs> I didn't even think about that Till you said that right now You're funny No <laughs> I don't know bro Yeah the, the game hates Lil Nas X It's cool Um uh, it is what it is, man. Oh yeah, I wasn't saying nothing like that. Yeah, yeah. He it easily he easily gets the feature. All right. <laughs> All right, but look, so moving on, what I wanted to mention about the little baby you brought it up. Also, no Drake. You know Dirk has songs with Lil Baby and Drake probably tucked away. Right. You can assume that. At least fan. at least one. Right. So for him not to put that on this album. And it's projected that he's going to do at least like 130. Right? Dirk? Might drop twice? No, no, no. Dirk is like that. Oh, Dirk, oh, Dirk oh, is, that's what you're saying. I'm saying like, I think Dirk might have like put his foot in the game right now. That's another, like, I wanted to get into talking about that. But um, just with everything that's going on, all the beef shit that we just talked about. And then I'm going to. We're going to talk about it later, but the album sales that the little joint tape just did, right. I know they did it for a particular reason, but regardless of that, Dirk doing 100, if you do 100 plus, bro, you one of them. You know what I'm saying? So I just want to say that, like, we already knew that, but Dirk, like, put his foot on the game, like, okay, I'm one of those artists with this. No baby feature. No Drake feature. If he has that, he doing 150 plus. I'm glad you brought this up because this was something that I was going to get into, but I had actually forgotten. This is a point where you get to step back and take a look and go, oh, this is rap now. Yep. Um, Lil Durk is. The game is right in front of us, bro. Lil Durk and Lil Baby are the hottest rappers in rap. Yep. It's, it's changed. I remember we were sitting here in 2018, 19. 
I was telling you I was waiting on this game to change. Who was going to take it? What was rap going to look like? It's here. It's right in front of it's us. It's here. Yep. Um, yeah, you don't need... We're, we're to the point where Lil Durk doesn't need the Drake feature anymore to push the album. He doesn't need anybody else. He pushed the album with solos. With a diss record. <laughs> <laughs> like, we being honest. Look at the look at the fucking magazines you guys like we got sitting on the table. Like yes, bro. this is it's their world now. It's a new game. That's crazy. I just wanted to say that, like, yeah, we've been knowing, but these niggas are the face of rap. And that's I'm okay with it. I'm so okay with that. I was that. gonna say, I like, I'm you. not I'm not trying to make it seem like I'm not. I'm just pointing out facts here. I love Drake. We've been letting the same rapper control the game for ten years. It's time. For somebody else to do it, and it's finally happening. Yep, yep, yep. And <clears throat> not to say that they're not the Drake caliber artist, but I don't think the little babies and little Dirks um, take this and run with this as long as Cash Money and Young Money did, unless they put a bunch of artists behind them. QC's doing it, obviously. Mm. Um, so I think you're going to get to see other rappers come up the same way we did in the earlier 2000s and see. Plenty of niggas run this game now. It's not going to be right. just one artist for 10 years. Right. Um, just another artist that we just talked about dropping at the beginning of the year, Gunna. Yeah. Gunna outsold Thug. You know what I'm saying? He beat out The weekend. You know? It's just like, it's shit that is happening right in front of us, bro, that you need to like, you need to notice. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, rap is in a good spot. Space though, yeah, it's I love where rap is right now. Great place, bro. One of the best places it's been in a minute. I love it and I hate it, and I've been saying it's on the pod too because I feel like it's only down from here. <laughs> that's that's what I feel like sucks. Once you get to the top, it's only down from there. Yeah, and I think I disagree when you said that before because I was like, it's always gonna evolve. That's true. I think it's always gonna evolve, bro. We always gonna have a sound that is the sound, no matter what time we in. That is true to us. And we're always going to have that that core fan base that listens to rap. What I always think in my head is once, once you listen to a hit song so much, it's not cool anymore. It's not funny anymore. Once you eat certain things too much at a fast food restaurant or you go too many places at a certain time, like mm -hmm. too many places, or you go to the same place so many times, you don't like going to that place anymore. Yeah. Rap has been so commercialized now. I feel like they're going to move on with it someday. Yeah, you bring up a good point as far as um cuz I this is one thing I hate about the Travis McDonald's deals, yeah, all these types it's yeah, this yeah. it's an era. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I definitely agree with that. Um but what I the one thing I do hate about this music right now, this this time period that we in is the oversaturation. That yeah. kills me, bro, cuz I so much music comes out all the time. And I'm trying to listen to shit. I'm trying to save shit. I be forgetting. Like, my recently added to be full, bro. And I'm just like, oh, this album just came out a month or two ago, and I forgot about it. I think it's a good thing and a bad thing. I think it's a, I think it's a bad thing for what you're saying. I think it's a good thing because if we only got a, a specific amount of artists fed to us like we did back in the radio days, we mm -hmm. might never hear in this era, like mm -hmm. in this era of rap today, to like 2022, we might never hear Conway. We might never get our hands on yeah. the type of artist like Benny because it might not be accessible. He might just be selling his music through his website back then. Yeah, yeah. You, that's a good point. I, as far as uh, saying that it's a gift and a curse. Right. Because, yeah, obviously the platform that we are now with the internet and social media is easier to be noticed. It's easy to, to distribute your music right. to anybody and, exactly. and gain an audience. Exactly. So, yeah, I respect that. But just from the consumer standpoint myself... Um, it's a lot of music. Yeah, bro. Like, it'd be... I can't. I feel like I can't appreciate music like how I used to at a younger age. Right. I guess it was because you go out and buy the CD. There's an attachment. You know, maybe it's little. It's little things that cause that as well. But I'm just like sometimes now I don't feel myself being as attached to the music as I used to. I also uh, that that just reminded me. I hate I hate when people think that because we are our age that we never went inside of the CD stores and bought CDs like. <laughs> Like, we was definitely there. Like yeah. we were inside the CD warehouse. We was inside a version. We I was gonna say Sam Goody. Yeah, we was. All, we was all inside Sam Come Goody. Stop playing with us. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I don't want to get too uh too far into it. I don't even we remember what we were got, talking. We, about. I was gonna say we already got far into. We talk about dirt. 
we weren't even anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Dirk dropped an A plus album. Yeah, I don't really cop that. Yeah, like cop I that. He's gonna do like one thirty first week. That's a lot. That's big for Dirk. Yeah, bro, that's great. Alone, no Drake feature, no little baby feature. He don't need it. Yeah, that those are of course his dogs, but that yeah. was a statement. Like mm-hmm. that's why I said that was Drake. I mean, that was J Cole dropping with no features. That's why I said at the beginning, I said he put his foot on the game. Yeah, on the, on the game's neck with this, bro. Like for real. That's fire. And yep. you saw you saw uh, baby do that with my turn. Yeah. Or did my turn didn't have did it have a Drake on it? I don't, I don't think so. Man, I don't care who was on it. That was a great album. No, yeah, like, I'm not saying there it, was a crutch or no shit like yeah, that. Yeah, that's no, what's absolutely not. Um, I'm gonna look that up though. We can move on. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and get the singles. Rich the kid and uh, take off. They dropped. I thought they had a tape coming this week. Yeah, that's what you said. I didn't know. No, they they know. kept teasing. You know, they've been teasing a tape forever. They said crypto was gonna be the name of it, but I thought that was the name of the tape. We just got a track called Crypto. Yeah. I like that track. It's fire. Takeoff. It's it's good to hear from Takeoff actually, because you really don't unless it's an entire Migos album, or they're gearing up for one, or mm-hmm. it's a, a QC tape. You don't really hear from Takeoff at all. It was good to hear from Takeoff. Takeoff spitting. He going crazy. Um, Rich the kid went crazy too. Yeah, yeah. So um, I looked up a little baby for you though. There's no Drake on my turn. Fire. Yeah. Um, them niggas, those are those are them niggas. Facts, bro. Um, but this song, I don't really like it that much, bro. I'm gonna be honest with you. What? what? I really don't. I really don't. I think it's a lazy track. I think it's a lazy track. Takeoff sound cool, but like, what is he talking? This song lazy. What do you mean by lazy? You think nobody took the time to go hard? It's boring. It's a boring ass song. To me, this is a boring ass song. Like this don't Whoa. this don't get me excited to hear their take. I'm listening to this like, all right, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, this I'm got like, me excited to hear the tape. No, not at all. Not okay. for me, bro. That, I, was, that was just boring. Like, I like Takeoff had a cool little verse. You don't like anything Rich the Kid did? I don't think so. I only listened to it once. So this is, you know, me going in. I may walk this back later on. But as of right now, no, nah, man. Um, I've been kind of like off of Rich the Kid for a while too, so maybe it's because of that. Like I don't care to hear Rich like how I did at one point in his career. But Takeoff sounds okay as well. And the chorus, bro, is just lazy. Like you throw an elbow like LeBron did to the nigga. It's it's like ooh. Okay. Thought it was, <laughs> thought it was clever. Nah, man. <laughs> I okay. don't think so. Um I fucked with it. But we can move on. Yellow Bees, you dropped the track. Who do? Man, I just stumbled upon this huh, when I sent it. That's fire. Man, this That's, shit go hard. Yeah, that, that track is different. Yeah, it was just on the, on the Apple Music chart. So I was like, I'm going to check out BZ. But um, a cool little smooth, you know, song. Melodic track from BZ. Right, got little, the auto-tune going. Love song, you know, singing to you. Um, it sounds really nice. I've been, I played this song more than once since I sent yeah, it. Yeah, nah. For sure. Um. Not too much to get into. Uh, Jay Worthy and Larry June, they dropped the track, Leave It Up To Me. Yeah, you man. heard this. I didn't get into it. You didn't it. get to it. So another good song. I don't know if you remember the track that they did. It might have been 2020 or last summer. I can't remember, but it's called Always. Always. You remember that? Larry June I, and, and Jay Worthy? No. I want you always. You remember that? Yeah, yeah. So this is kind of... Well, I know that song, yeah. but like, well, I know the sample The sample, it. okay. This song is kind of similar to that. It's just another joint track that they did. It sounds just like how that song sounds, um, but it sounds good. This is another just cool Larry song, him and Jay Worthy. They know how to just flow the beat, and I can't think of who produced it, but I'm pretty sure it's the same one that did the uh, Always, because they do a sample in the beginning as well. This song is from a, a old school... Leave it up to me is the name of the song, I believe. Yep. So you just check that out, man. Larry coming soon with a tape. Larry ain't dropped since he dropped his album last year. Okay. Which is crazy because you know Larry used to drop like six, six seven, albums eight, a year. Nine projects a year. Yeah. And he's on he's gonna probably do like two or three this year. Him and Cardo said they got some shit coming now, but Larry not dropping music like how he used to. Larry is a bigger artist now. Yes. Larry is a That's large why I'm it up. Larry is a commodity now. That's why I'm bringing it up, bro. We had talked about he gonna be at the Dreamville Fest. 
You know, that's crazy that like, bro, this is Larry. That Larry has Empire do that, man. They yeah, do that. They that that's do that crazy. That's that's great. I don't even really have words because every time I think about him, I always do revert back to like the Dom Kennedy, like that underground sound, mm -hmm. and how whether he didn't get there or didn't want it, um. Dom Kennedy was never there, but if you always a fan of his, you respected that, but you always wanted that like that high yeah. status for him. And I'm glad you bring that up because I think I like seeing it in Larry. Yeah, and I think this time period would have helped Dom more than it would have back then if he would have signed to a major. Underground gets you way more money than Underground got you back when the Yellow album came out. Right, right. So artists now everything we just mentioned earlier as far as like how much you know the internet is behind the music now right it benefits these new artists as absolutely well, bro it really does somebody like larry is a perfect example ever since he signed that and it's just a distribution deal because empire you still independent they just carry you like how a major label would essentially right. they they put money into it they back you so larry has taken it's that. like a big ass rostrum right exactly bro so larry has taken that and took off bro yeah he has taken off. There's it's a crazy. lot of artists that are on Empire that you don't really know because they're bigger artists that yeah. have gotten out of their their terrible deals with the the bigger majors, right. and they've signed the Empire because it's a lot of leverage there. Yep. So their biggest artist, rest in peace, was Dolph. Really, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, they had XXX Tentacion too. Did. I think okay. something like that. They got um, uh, Money Man. I know is another one. It's a it's a female artist, but yeah, the whole PRE they was backed by empire and not to say that they weren't great but they had empire back in them as well you know what i'm saying those joint tapes that we get with glock and Dolph, those were all empire those are being backed by empire bro okay okay if i'm, if I'm not mistaken you're right you know that's what I'm saying? that's how Dolph really got away with saying i never signed yeah because you know it's just a distribution distribution deal, deal. Larry, or a publishing like, deal. Yeah, they yeah. they're still independent artists. Yeah, um, I'm gonna check and see if the, if uh, that was on you. Yeah, Paper Route is Empire. If I'm if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Yeah, I think they started doing that on purpose. So you see how Empire is capitalized. So you can see all the artists under the label. No, no, no I'm saying like in oh, Paper PR, Route Empire. Okay, I think they PRE. started capitalizing Empire. Oh, that's that's lit. That. That's fire. That's lit. That's fire, bro. <laughs> that's that's fire. Dog, the kind bro. of partnership that is. Rest in peace, fam. Fuck. Yeah, rest in peace, dog. It just hit me the other day. I was looking through the gram. I think I seen a picture of dog, bro. That shit hurt my soul. Yeah, bro. I, I still, like, I really don't even think about it much. Like, yeah. that's not like how I used it. I was saying it's my first time thinking about it in a minute. Because, you know, it's been since November, bro. He died right before Thanksgiving. It's been, like, you see how fast shit just moved? That was before Thanksgiving. Right before Thanksgiving, I swear yeah, to God. Rest in peace, dog, man. I swear to God, bro. That's insane. Yep. Um, Ready to get in the news? All right, man. Um, <clears throat> I, f I kind of figured this was going to happen sometime soon. TikTok launched a new sound on platform. It lets artists directly upload and monetize their own music. I think this is pretty, pretty, pretty big. Mm -hmm. And uh, from what I'm reading, um, the platform will give 100% royalties to the artists in the first year. Damn. And 90% after. Yeah, um, let me just read this. <clears throat> Artists that sign up will have access to their audience insights and development, as well as expert uh, advice from SoundOn's AR development. This team will give promotional support through creator marketing access to TikTok's song tab, where music is linked on profile pages. SoundOn will also distribute to other music platforms such as Spotify and Apple Music. So you'll get 90% of the royalties that go uh that you people have listened to your shit on tiktok which the numbers are already going crazy yeah that's a big deal and they're going to distribute your music yeah. to apple spotify other places where you'll collect the royalties from there too that's a huge deal for up-and-coming artists that's a huge deal for anybody but especially for the up and up-and-coming artists i think that's going to benefit them the most i feel like everything that's being set in place with creators monetizing fucks the like either the labels are gonna end one of these days or yeah, the bro. labels are gonna have to get in bed with these these companies so yes. more than sony 
Because yeah. Sony, we already heard, is in bed with TikTok, which might have something to do with this. Probably. We need to more. We need to get more info on this. But I agree with you. So we just earlier in the podcast we were talking about as far as how the game is evolving from the artist standpoint. Right. The game is also in, evolving as far as the ownership, the whole label situation, the like creator all, standpoint. Bro, it's the game is changing, bro. Yes. It's really changing because you were saying like, I think the labels are gonna have to start giving more to the artists. Like they're gonna have to. It's gonna get to a point where you can't be as greedy as you used to be. Either that, or they're going to have to make deals with these TikToks, or yeah, like Trilling they're gonna have all this they're gonna have to find a way to come into play to make this money somewhere. Because a lot of these artists are realizing, yeah, I can go to the label, I can make my money for X amount of time, yeah. I can leave the label. And then go start my own shit there. Exactly. Or I could just grind my own shit up and never do the label. Exactly. It's going to change. The, the label are only going to have the, you know, the biggest heads. It's going to get to a point, though, where, like, you're maybe not the so-called greatest rappers in the game or not going to be signed to a label, bro. No one's end goal in this rap game is to be on the label. No one's end game is to be on the label. Right. And I think you can ask a lot of older artists they would much rather have had this opportunity that, that these newer artists have absolutely at least, at least you have a choice back then you didn't have a choice it was label or nobody's gonna hear my music absolutely you know i have saying? to get this to somebody that's gonna get it on the radio exactly. because they're gonna get me signed exactly now, i have to get signed now you don't have to do that yeah so like, like <laughs> that was the thing back then like i gotta get signed yes. like niggas had their favorite record label like i'm gonna sign to this one yep. nowadays niggas is Creating their own. Well, I say this this is foreshadowing, in my opinion. Like you mentioned, because Sony and TikTok, we already know there's conversations there. So Right. And that might be is, what's going on here. Yeah, we don't know. This is going to be more. I think we're going to start to see more of this from other partner companies. TikTok. What's another uh, app that niggas be sharing? Um, they music. I think I said Triller. Triller. Um, I think, bro. Triller should have. Should have already done this. Yeah, yeah. Triller and Snap, not Snapchat. Triller and SoundCloud should have been teamed up and done something say, like this. Bro, I was just about to say SoundCloud. I promise you, I was just going to bring it up. I feel like SoundCloud could be back to like how it used to be. I really think SoundCloud is still a good source to get your music out. It is. They just have to find an incredible way to rebrand. If Sound, like if SoundCloud finds SoundCloud, damn, I can't talk today. If SoundCloud can find the right way to rebrand, they'll get right back on on par. Okay. There's nothing wrong with the system. You can still find all your great songs. You can like if you were a good artist, mm -hmm. you can still upload your music there. Find a, like get People a, still do. There's artists that still upload, gain a fan base, even monetize your shit. Exactly. So, so like you can even pick which one of your projects on that you want to monetize. Keep yeah. some free, monetize some of the other. Like. You, it's really your opportunities are limitless at SoundCloud. Matter of fact, after this, I'm gonna reach out to SoundCloud for the <laughs> Bro, I swear I was just gonna say, you know what? Fuck you, maybe I should rap. Nah, fuck it. No, nah, we about to get this SoundCloud deal. <laughs> fuck is you talking about, nigga? <laughs> Whatever it takes, bro. What we gotta paint this orange? I was gonna say, shit. <laughs> Take it down. Nigga, <laughs> <laughs> y'all you want to tell to read SoundCloud? I mean, you, like, nigga, SoundCloud? Bro, whatever you want. Bet. <laughs> the hell? Um no, I'm serious. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, what do you need? <laughs> I'm, I'm broke, nigga. What do you need? What do you need? What do you need? And you got the, you got the ability to change that. I nigga. can't eat. I'm broke, nigga. <laughs> you got the power. You got the power to change that, bro. All right, all right. We're gonna move on. But now that now that I'm here, what is it that Bow Wow tried to win an Oscar with every B B class movie he did? Damn, really? That's how you feel. You remember the the. Uh, the My Mother's Gone scene from Roll Bounce. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and he was, nigga, he beat up the car. Now what you talking My about? My Mother's Gone. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga asked, you gotta That's take my dude. mom. <laughs> God. Uh, Why you gotta take my mom? No, he thought he was winning Academy for that. We can think, go back. I think it's good acting. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that boy got straight your pants. <laughs> Was Bow Wow getting his ass whooped left and right in uh in Fast and Furious? Shit, he was only in one movie, wasn't he? Or two? 
He got his ass whooped in. In Tokyo Drift, for yeah. sure, he got his ass okay. beat over an iPod. <laughs> okay, I was just making sure. <laughs> over I was making sure iPod, that was him. Bro. Okay. And he got mad at the white boy. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. We were speaking about old platforms. We were speaking about SoundCloud. Now we can talk about the old, old platform. If you were around back when iPods and MP3 players were lit before, back when iPod touches were more popular than the iPhone type shit, um, you know about LimeWire. You know about uploading your music onto your MP3 or or whatever device you had free from LimeWire. Um, you heard the jokes about how the FBI or whoever it was was going to come to your door. You were going right to jail <laughs> for using LimeWire. Yeah, absolutely. You, Copyright. And back then when we didn't know too much about the internet, we really thought it could happen. Of course. <laughs> of course. Nigga was scared. Yeah, I was on my... Never mind. I'm not going <clears> to... <throat> this is good for the, uh, the era of burning CDs too, even right before the iPod. Absolutely, yeah. that two thousand and six seven ish era. Yep. Um, I was using it more in the oh eight oh nine yeah, era when the iPod came. Yeah, I was yeah. too. I was. But um, LimeWire is back. It's not back to where we can download our music right here online, but it's back as an NFT community. Correct marketplace. Yeah, NFT marketplace. Is this in the metaverse? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't read so much about it. I got it up though. If you wanna, yeah, let me see. I can read that. <clears throat> It says the classic peer-to-peer file sharing platform LimeWire will soon re- be returning to the web, but as an NFT marketplace, um, LimeWire will debut with support for buying and trading music relating uh, music related NFTs such as exclusive songs, merchandise, graphical artwork, and experiences like backstage content. The startup will also launch its own utility token via a private sale within the next three weeks, which Paul said would be used like a loyalty program okay so basically they're gonna obtain the rights to like some music gems and they're gonna put them up as nfts type shit like they should reach out to they're for up nah they should reach out to like soldier boy on some shit oh yeah yeah and Soulja get like boy. a That'd be loud. and get like a tupac song I mean, a tupac <laughs> cover as the, <laughs> the nft and just play his shit All right um no i think this is a good idea LimeWire was huge, and if you're into this type of thing, like the NFT space, whether you're into LimeWire or not, you know the mm. the background of it, and it's nostalgic. I think it's going to do great. I was about saying this may even draw you to it, to the marketplace or to the NFT world. Yeah, or into piracy. Yeah, you know, probably <laughs> into <laughs> copyright infringement or whatever. Shit. Yeah, uh, yeah. What's the shit they used to play before the movie come on? That's the shit we talk about. They'd be like, you'd be fine. $250,000 for doing this shit. Bro, before you- the FBI coming. Before you got to play your favorite DVD. Right. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Um, Man, some the, the burnt CD era was some of the greatest time ever for music and movies. I think it did more for movies than it could have ever done. Uh, it did the most for barbershops. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, no lie. My dad used to have a partner, bro, in South Dallas when we was young. He had a store for burning movies and music. Yeah, like, like he, he had, had a home. legal business for. I don't know how he did it, but it was a legal business. I swear on everything in my life, bro. Yeah. Do, um. Do you remember back when we were in junior high? They opened up that legal business right over there by the Taco Bell that was selling them fake ass Jordans. <laughs> <laughs> Same, uh, the, same thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Same exact thing. In that same. I promise you, same thing. <laughs> Bro, I promise that, you, same thing. That's crazy. <laughs> niggas, was, niggas was running to them $60 breads like it was nothing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Though, I, newsflash, niggas. Those was not the breads. I was saying, a lot of niggas was wearing them hoes to school. Bro. Oh, my gosh. Y'all came in with them breads. We was on y'all ass. I promise. If you don't, if you didn't know, we knew. We knew. I was going to say, <laughs> we knew. We did know, sir. Bro, that's crazy. That shopping center look. A hundred times different now. Yeah. There's buildings um, everywhere um, at that hell now. That's crazy. That was that was trash. They really let that happen too. What was the name of that hell, fam? I don't know. Kicks R Us or some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> Kicks for sale. Man. <laughs> um <laughs> Kicks Fly. <laughs> <laughs> These fake. <laughs> oh my gosh. You oh lucky. You goodness. remember uh have you seen those previews of, of Schmirk the interview? And he was like, You name twenty people, I'm gonna name five. <laughs> I'm about to name five of you niggas with them fakes on. <laughs> um, oh, shit. Don't do that. Don't do that. No, I'm just playing. Uh, we can move on. The game. 
We didn't talk about it last week because I don't think you had gotten into it yet. He did his Drink Champs interview. Yep. Crazy interview. What I said from the very beginning was, these are going to be some of the greatest lies we ever heard. Like, (laughs) I already know, like, you know the game is M.O. And I love the game. I love his rap. I love his M.O. I love what he got going, except for some of the, like, allegations I've heard. But outside of that, like, I love the game. And I just knew this was going to be interesting because I know he lies. <laughs> Wrong? No. Okay. 100% You remember correct. the Tupac picture? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he do a lot of lying. Um, <clears throat> he started this interview out by, uh, well, this was also my favorite lie. <laughs> he said he received a call <laughs> from the man that shot Osama bin Laden. Right. And he said that he was playing one of his songs when he took the shot. When the kill confirmed. With an AirPod in. Right. <laughs> he couldn't even remember the name of the song. You realize the AirPods weren't even out yet. Yeah. This happened in like 2011. Um, But even if that was like the wrong terminology and it was just an earbud. Right. How true do we think this is? Uh, that is a lie, Carl. Like, 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 let me stop you right there, Carl. Because <laughs> I was gonna try to name a percentage. I swear, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna leave. We don't even need to get that right. far. Nah, yeah, he's definitely lying his ass off, bro. Um, nigga, you know how? Just let's just talk about it real quick. Do you know how high, like, pressure that situation is? And you telling me I got some headphones on listening to <laughs> One Blood? <laughs> Yeah, no. I don't need no motivation, yeah, no. bro. In a moment like that, I'm shooting. And you think I'm going to call you about this classified operation to let you know I was playing this when I took the shot? Crazy as hell. I'm not, bro, nobody in in <laughs> nobody in war right now in the midst of battle has <laughs> earphones in, dog. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. You don't need no motivation. You know how niggas listen to shit to, to work like, out. Nigga, nigga, I kill shit for real. Like, you don't need no I song. Don't need no motivation, bro. I'm out here killing. If you think about that, like you could be, you could have your head knocked off at any moment. Right. I need. To Why be- in the world would I have one blood by the game plan? <laughs> That's what I'm saying, fam. Like, nigga, I am on. 10 out there, bro. I bet you've been not even you ain't, past. You ain't never been on no shit that I'm on right now. I'm playing you. The fuck? Bro, this yeah, is real play life, me. nigga. This is real life Call of Duty. You think I'm out here worried about your ass? And you think that if any of that didn't happen, what I was going to do is call you after this. And let you know that you're the sole reason why one of the greatest <laughs> achievements, I guess, from government. One you know, of the world's biggest terrorists. Right, bro. Ever is gone. <laughs> All right. Come on now. That shit was funny as hell, though, just to hear him say no, that. No, it was funny. Um, you could tell Game got really, really, really drunk on this interview. Yeah. Um, Bro, he down a whole bottle of... Uh, Azul. Yeah, the classic yeah. Azul. But you got a really good interview out of him. You got to hear about his his yeah. upbringing, like his gang upbringing. Right. Um, this was a, a solid ass drink chance, fam. Did you hear him when he broke down his lyrics in Easy? Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! Like I didn't even think about it listening to it no, like that. The, you gotta be. You gotta know him or be from where he from. And he was talking about Easy E damn near the whole time. Right. Yeah. You gotta just. He broke it down. I was like, damn, this nigga. Like that shit metaphorical, nigga. I yeah. was like, damn. That is that is crazy. Made me love the song that much more, bro. I already enjoyed it, but I'm like the easy to end up on E. I gonna shut up my Columbine, and the Crips to send it up, and I'm not mm-hmm. thinking this entire time. Oh, easy Crip. Like I'm thinking, like just easy. Like they threw a Z in there because they wanted to say something different. We talking about easy this whole time, All right? L A. Just L A. Period. But yeah, that was good. Um, another. So I agree with everything you said. But one of my favorite topics was the the whole G Unit situation as well. He actually um, big up fifty. Shit, not even that. Just like the the goods and the bads. But one part right. I want to talk about was the shootout that happened in New York. Mm-hmm. He actually like talked about it and, and explained what happened. I don't think I had ever heard that before. No, um, yeah. 
So he just talked about how, you know, them niggas got into a shootout in New York. You just had to be there. You had to remember it happened like, nigga, what was that 05, 06, 07? I, don't I think know. it was like 06, something like that. So it was just 05, to, probably something. That's when 50 was my favorite rapper. So I was well aware of what had happened. But, you know, fast forward 15 years later, I'm like, oh, this is the story about it. So um, I, just, I always liked the game more than I liked 50. Wow. But the game didn't make as good as Al, like, 50 made better albums than the game back then. Nowadays, it's the opposite way around. That's crazy that you would even say that. Because 50 Cent was my favorite. No, 50 made better albums than the game back then. It's just like now, the better, it turns out the better lyricist ended up being the game. The game, okay. I respect yeah. that, yeah. Because even as I grow, as I grown older, I started fucking with the game more. The longevity it, as a rapper. I was just saying 50 wasn't rapping. I was just going to say that. So, yeah. Um, but that was one of my favorite parts of the interview. Um, he talked about Dre. He talked about the whole aftermath, how he got signed. You know, yep. did you did you listen to the story? Did you hear the story? He said how he was on a block and a nigga pulled up like, hey, Dr. Dre told me to they were like, get the, the fuck out of here. Yeah, they're like, get the fuck out of here. Bro, so he was like, nobody told him. And then he spun back around one like day, a like a later. month later. Yeah, yeah, that shit was crazy. He was like, nigga, what? You didn't tell me this nigga wanted Dr. Dre. To and they were like, yo, studio. I bring him at all costs. Like, yeah. it don't matter. Make sure when you come back, he's here. So that's another thing. And you just got to be from L.A., I don't know what he lying about. He was like, it's a cul-de-sac. And like, nigga, when you pull in, we close you off. No, I heard about that. He from, I think he from Cedar Block. No, like yeah, he, he did be, say that. But I'm just imagining it. It's on some like Grand Theft Auto shit. No, bro. it's literally on some Grand Theft Auto it's shit. It's on some yeah, uh, like, San Andreas shit. The cul-de-sac. Like, nigga, just imagine that. Like, okay, we let you I mean, in. some but, streets like that. There's some streets like that around here. When you circle around, they block off the exit. Mm-hmm. Like on some like one like, way in, no way out. I was like, what the? Fuck mm -hmm. Some real like gay shit You know It just I like history like that bro That shit excite me Yeah some I'm shit like, that you can Kind of like When you can get that sh Like the early 2000s You can still get that Like that yeah. type of shit off yeah. Or like in certain areas You can still get that Kind of shit off That's player Yeah yeah um, But yeah when you hear These types of stories Like it's Really hearing where they came from, what it was like when they got picked up, what was their mindset like when they were rapping their mm -hmm. first album, like when the, <clears throat> I almost called that shit the chronic, when the documentary came out, like this is what was in his head. Mm -hmm. And yeah, of course, I do believe some of, some of it, but uh, I do think some of them was lies too. Yeah, yeah. Um, he talked about the Super Bowl situation and brought that brought up a great ass point as far as like how Jay Z organized the uh, the show, quote unquote. Correct. And, and how every rapper or artist from L. A. was chosen as a safe option compared to the game being such a not safe option. So he just wanted to make it clear like it wasn't really no beef because he should have been there as far as you looking at it from the aftermath circle from Doctor. Do you Dre's think he should have been there? No. Okay, I was gonna say even even past what Game says, I don't think he should have been there. No, no, no. But I understood it. There's I, an argument for for being in Dr. Dre's lineage when Fifty showed up. I was just like, well, also Fifty has arguably one of the biggest songs in the world ever. No, no, that, no. I'm just I'm just yeah, thinking yeah. on some shit like what song? I mean, even Mary J does too. Uh, what song could have could Game have came out? And they asked him that. And Did the, you hear what he said? The nigga said like, uh, what uh, hated to love it. Okay, or, or uh, the other one, how we do? That's what he said. But at first, he said like six hundred bars. That's what he said. Yeah, he was just—he's a dumbass. <laughs> and even Nor was like, "Bro, what the fuck?" Yeah, <laughs> he's uh, like, "You can't perform that." Um, you but can't perform that, bro. You think those white folks at the at no, the there's, uh, there's no way the game at the Super been Bowl would have cared about hated to love it? They care about in the club, and I think they know. Now, like, Gin and Juice and those songs, like, back then, those are yeah. timeless classics back then. I'm agreeing with you. I don't yeah. think the Super Bowl gives a fuck about Hate It or Love It. Yeah, yeah. I'm agreeing with you. They just asked him the question, and that's oh, the Oh, yeah, song. no, yeah, that's what he said that's in the answer, said. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but, no, I just was saying from, you know. The lineage standpoint. The, the media was like, you know, why is the game not there? Then they tried to be like this whole beef situation. He had to come out and address it, remember? No, right. He was like, you know, I'm speaking for myself, blah, blah, blah. So he kind of explained that. And how it was just, it was a decision made by Jay-Z. So if you're looking at it, because of the partnership with the NFL, mm -hmm. you go get Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg is an icon. You know what I'm saying? Right. 
Dre, Icon. You know what I'm saying? 50 um, Icon. 50 Icon. You know Mary what I'm saying? Mary Icon. Icon. Um, Eminem, Icon. Eminem, Icon. Now, he was just saying as far as on the Kendrick situation, Kendrick is still the Icon, but he was just like, it's, an a, icon. it's a safe choice. You know right. what I'm he's, he's not... Nope, you're not gonna no gang ties. You're not gonna piss off too many people with this. You're gonna piss off somebody, but but yeah, he's a safe choice. You're gonna piss off some people letting letting Snoop do what he do. Right, but you're okay with it because Snoop is Snoop. Did you hear that Jay was was willing to walk away? Yeah, yeah. We didn't bring that up on the pot. No, that was we a didn't. this week thing. Okay, it was but yeah, I did see that um as far as he said he would walk away if if it couldn't be the way that he wanted it to be type shit yeah. with the artist that he chose, allowing him to be themselves. Yeah. I respected that. Yeah, me too. I respected that for sure. Um, um I still don't think this ever happens again. But Yeah, yeah. But I respected it. Definitely respected. But um long ass interview, bro, it's about four hours. Four hours. I still got like an hour and a half yeah, to go. Same, same. I haven't but, finished it. Um, he did get drunk as hell. He did kind of, you know, start acting the ass really because he just drunk. But this is a great interview, bro. He did not delve into the Dr. Dre thing. He just said it and they moved on. Yeah. Like they didn't even ask about it. Damn, Nori. And um, that's another thing because they even asked him as far as Dre compared to 50, who has done or no, he said Dre and Kanye, I think, who has done more for you as an artist. And he picked Kanye. Yeah, that's what I was saying. He was like Dre. Uh, he was like Kanye did more for me in two weeks than and Dre's, Dre's done, done for me in my whole career. That's what I was. And they never explained. He never I know, yeah, expounded uh, on that. Just like, I'm like Nori, you got to ask about that, <laughs> right? But it's they crazy. was they was drinking. Yeah. Um, it's a good interview. Definitely tap into that interview. I'm, I'm I need to watch that Schmirk interview. Oh fuck, I forgot that Schmirk interview Bro, is gonna I be was, crazy. I was like, it's another interview I'm supposed to be watching. That Schmirk Damn. interview is out. It dropped the same day of his album. Damn. Yeah, we we're need to watch that. that I fuck with them too. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> where are we at, man? Uh, Chris Brown. We were just. Right, yeah. So we know that. Chris Brown has some sexual assault slash rape allegations on his back. We had already saw from the beginning. This came out right near an album release. Um, so we were like, this kind of happens to Chris a lot. This never really goes anywhere. This seems to happen at the same time. We'll see where this goes. And <clears throat> some audio came out of the female admitting to it, correct? If I'm right. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, she was begging for sex from Chris on the phone. That's what it was? Yeah. Okay. Um. So that's over. And I think her <laughs> lawyer dropped it, right? Yeah, I was going to say that. That is crazy. You know it's over when your own lawyer drops your situation. Just go ahead and drop that. Yep. It was following this shared notes, this voice recording, essentially, is what it is. Right. Um, so yeah, the, the lawyer pulled from the case. So yeah, this is this is over, but <laughs> this is bro, this is sickening. And we can we can talk about And this uh, shit happens to people and these types of tapes don't come out. Bro, you know what you see a lot of times, and I'm not trying to sign a uh, sound um mm. misogynistic, bro, but like No, it happens on both ends. What I'm saying is when this come out, though, they always kill us. They always kill the male. They always kill the male immediately. What? In this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before the, the male truth is always out. get killed. Yeah, and then, but then. They when, stood behind, behind Chris in this one, though. A, okay. lot, a lot of them did. But then when it comes out that shit like this happens, it's like. you. Sh well, yeah, you should have done this the entire time. Now it's just like, damn, why is it? But why? Is it always like that? Why can't we just wait and see how it play out and then make a decision like niggas? Will, this is like career deadening, bro. The same way. Um, well, no, we'll get into that. In a I was gonna bring him up next. I already know what you're yeah, going to. Yeah, the same way we haven't touched that situation yet. Yeah. Like that. Are we talking about Tory Mac? Is that what we? No, nah, I wasn't even. I was talking about Deshaun Watson. Oh, we didn't even bring that up. No, really. no, I hadn't. Um, I was talking about Tory Mac. I was. Yeah, I was yeah. saying the same, same way. Same shit though. We really on this pod. Have not touched that situation. Of course, we were out when it happened. Yeah. But until that thing is over with, now we're going to have a hell of a pod. We said this off mic one time. When the verdict comes, 
when that verdict comes in, yeah, like best episode, yeah. Whether that, yeah, hell yeah. Whether that's on the left side or the right side, whatever side you say yeah. that is, right. we're having a hell of a pod. Whatever happens, like I'm, I'm going in. On- we are logical people here at this podcast, so we're gonna wait for all the court mm-hmm. proceedings to end. Yeah, yeah. And then we're gonna draw our conclusions. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but just, just to end off with the Chris Brown situation, I'm glad that it happened to be that you know this is not true in this situation right um because obviously from his history it scares you i think when it first came out maybe we you know you kind of scares a lot of people you you kind of lean to like oh shit here we go again but at the same time you know you got to wait for it to play out so it's good to see the truth come out no matter what the truth is if it's that he did do it or he didn't do it you know whoever it may be right i just like getting the truth bro like uh, we just I was hoping to, Chris didn't do that shit. Yeah. I mean, I was kind of figuring he didn't. It's just fair to get the truth, but like, absolutely be needing that. Cause a lot of times you don't, you know what I mean? Or you don't hear nothing about it. So we didn't, we didn't talk about that Tory track that came out. Yeah. We, can go. <laughs> we can go ahead and, and segue into that. So yeah. What was the name of it, bro? Cap. Oh, okay. It was called Cap. Yeah. Damn. I, I heard it once. I heard it once too. Um, <laughs> Then we missed another song too, but we'll we finish off on it. But Tori obviously has a uh, Tori obviously has some information we don't, and, and like I said, we, we don't, don't need to get in. We don't need to get into anything. Um, he's just back outside popping a lot of shit, and this time when he's talking, he's talking about that other shit. Like he's, yeah. he's talking about his situations, his yeah. his court proceedings. Yeah, this one it was kind of whack to me. Corny to do this. Corny. This was really, really wag, bro. I would never do that. You don't have to. Like, why would you do that? No, because even if you are Tory, that the other the other person is still he he's still under Tory. He doesn't have to do this. He doesn't have to respond. Wag. And you, I'm you not just, talking about Megan because I'm not saying know. he's under her. I'm saying all. Tory. Tory is wag for this, bro. She wag, but. We can. I don't really want to talk. No, too I was much just saying it. he's popping his shit, obviously, because. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think you find out what happens to them next month, or they move something to next month soon. Yeah, I yeah. think they got a, a court hearing or something coming up. Yeah, don't think they don't think we're not like keeping up with that. We do know about what's going on. Yeah. We just don't talk about that here. We'll yeah. wait until that stuff finishes. So, just one more thing to um, the Chris Brown situation, the Deshaun Watson situation that's been ongoing the last two years. You know, he missed the whole last season mm-hmm. because of all these these allegations that are against him. These, right. you know. So, um, it came out that in court, let me pull up some information so I'm not incorrect yeah. on this. But um, basically, it's not going to court. Right. That's the situation that we are in right now with Deshaun Watson. So, um, and they didn't really like prove anything. They just said that oh, there's not it's enough. Been evidence. settled out of court. Oh okay. no, there's not enough evidence to even take it to court. Right. There's still some civil cases or something that's open, but like he could be back on the football field right now. That's kind of why I wanted to like segue, like of course talk about the situation. But like, I know you did send something to me. Yeah, I'm trying to. Does pull that it happen up. for him? Does he get back on the field? Absolutely. Okay. Deshaun Watson plays football this year. Okay. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. But um, let me try to find some info for us really quick, bro. And I had said it to you because he could be the quarterback of your Steelers, man. That's why I said it. You think so? <clears throat> That's definitely an option. Definitely an option. Um, I think he may go to, like, <clears throat> Carolina, need a quarterback, nigga the Saints, Tampa Bay, Steelers. Like, he could go. A lot of places. Okay. Man, I can't find the, the tweet that I'm trying to read, bro. You had sent it. No, no, you didn't. I'll take that back. No, you didn't. I had just sent something about it, but we can really move on. Essentially, though, <clears throat> there's still some civil cases that are open, so he's not completely just, like, done. But the reason why he wasn't on the football field, because he could have. this could have been a federal case. Hmm. They said that oh they're not going to hear any of these cases in court as far as as far as federal charges i didn't keep up too much with his case so i didn't know yeah so that's why i say he he can he's back football like now okay. they're like okay we'll take the chance on him now you know what i'm saying he, no criminal charges 
essentially is where we are right now. So, yeah, there may still be some civil, some settlements, but no jail time, no fed time, no criminal charges, which is crazy. Okay. I just wanted to bring I just wanted to bring that up, bro, because you know it was like it's over like twenty allegations and shit. No, I didn't keep up with it, so Man. like I didn't. I really wasn't even aware. Okay, okay. No, I just kind of wanted to segue into that because I'm not saying in his situation because it hasn't been proven whether he was right or wrong. Like they haven't. That's why I was kind of. It's kind of alarming. They still let him play. Because it's it's no longer going to be a federal okay. case, but they just they said it wasn't enough evidence for us to even bring this to court. What happened? Like what what happened? So supposedly his um, is it a massages? Is that what it's called? What I, his <laughs> massage therapist is masseuse. <laughs> masseuse. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, apparently, he said some things and wanted to be you know touched a certain way. He wanted he was, a hand job when he was getting his. Um, massages and he was, you know, being sexual with the person. That's not funny. That's not funny. No, at all. Just, I'm laughing because Kari was avoiding saying that he wanted a hand job. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to have sex, <clears throat> but that's essentially what it is. And then there just was allegation after allegation after allegation. It got up to like 20 allegations, bro. Oh, there were 20 masseuses that said he asked for a hand job. <laughs> <laughs> not even masseuses, just people. You know, it was like oh. <laughs> This person came out and said it. Now I'm comfortable. Like, yeah, he did sexually assault me. He oh, did. Okay. He did do this. Whatever. I thought they were all hand job allegations. Okay, <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. What's next on the list, fam? <laughs> My mom. <laughs> you got. Uh, you know what kind of crazy allegations? <laughs> I'm trying to move on. <laughs> How crazy it is to go to jail by asking for a hand job. <laughs> Um, oh my goodness, bro! <laughs> they should have let him know. <laughs> should let him off. <laughs> let him play. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I don't know what happened. Um, <laughs> oh shit! That's fucking crazy. Yo. I'll educate myself more if I'm wrong, audience. <clears throat> but I, I'm not aware. Why you got him on the list? What he do? Macklemore. Oh, I, I remember what he did. Now go ahead. Was that real? I just want to make sure that was real. I don't know. I'm finna find it. Because <laughs> if that's not real. No, it's not real. It's not real. Okay, it's okay. not real. It's not real. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I was about to say. I was about to toast the rapper here. Right. Uh, let's oh, just let's just move man. on. Let's get it. Um. So last week, the baby and young boys album dropped. Better than you. And the baby had, I think it was some serious XM uh, interview after it, mm. in which he stated. That his uh, his collab tape with Young Boy is the best tape that's happened since Watch the Throne. Or the best collab tape, right? Since Watch the Throne. Go ahead. I don't. I don't know if I have too much to say. I'm. <clears throat> there's not too. Do you? There's not too many uh, collab tapes in between it. But I don't think it's the best. Definitely not. It's no it's not even close. It's it's no chance. Is there a best is there a next best collab tape? I think Baby and Baby and Dirk. Baby and Dirk, uh Gunna and Baby. Okay. Um, um Super Slimy. Drip Drip Two Drip Harder. No, I'm I was saying Super Slimy. I'm talking about Drip Harder. Okay, no no no. I was saying that. Like you were saying that, and then I was adding one. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you were saying that's the name. No, of I was it. talking okay. about the future thugger. Yeah, uh, Metro and um, Offset in Twenty One, the Without Warning. That's a good one. All of these of which are better than Young Boy and the Baby's album. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, as far as touching Watch the Throne collab, we never get that again. Nothing, nothing ever touches that. We again. Never get it. Um, not even from the artists. Like, yeah, we'll never get it from two artists who were like in their prime. But I think everything that followed, we watched the throne. They could never even do that again. Yeah, like, bro. when Jay got with Jay Electronica, that was an amazing album. It'll never be watched the throne. Kanye could do a collab album with somebody. It'll be amazing. It'll never be watched the throne. Exactly. It was just a different time for that watch the throne tape to drop and like i said everything that came after um the music videos the concerts like two of the biggest artists doing the same genre on the same label running around with each other every single day that kind of connection they probably had 
that, that yeah, that just doesn't Never happen. Get it, bro. Never get yeah, it. Yeah, it doesn't happen. <laughs> That's some Scotty and Michael Jordan shit. Facts, facts, facts. But uh, I did that for you, Scotty. I said your name first. This is <laughs> right because he's somewhere crying. I'm a bitch. <laughs> but uh, the baby just get you know he gets in the modes where he just say whatever. Um, I think he do it on purpose, bro. Which brings me to my point with this album. It didn't sell well. I mean, obviously, I don't think you would expect it to. Did you see the sales? Like twenty nine thousand first week. They kind of threw that album just together. And that's what I'm going to get to. Like, yeah. So we look at that, you know. I'm not giving them, him a, a back door. A pass, that's not yeah. what I'm saying. So, but still, you looking at that like, yeah, 30000 is not a lot from these two. But at the same time, I think they did exactly what they wanted to do with this drop. Um, He made like, they said they made $2 million in the weekend off of that. See what I mean? Like, I think oh. it was just like a cash grab, really, bro. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? The baby and YP, like. They gonna get that money. So that's why I'm meaning like it did what it was supposed to do. Like we'll look at it, or not even us, just because I don't really care about the numbers. I really hate that we talk about the numbers all the time, but I don't really care unless you like a big artist that's supposed to sell big. Like okay, you supposed to do 100k, but like outside of that, I don't really be caring too much about the the numbers, bro. So them doing thirty thousand, I'm like okay, yeah, whatever. This did exactly what it needed to do. Uh, if we talking about numbers. You saw you saw Dirk said the label gave him forty million. I did see that. I did see that. That's facts. That's rap cap. <laughs> no, that's probably facts. I know it's probably facts. That's yeah, why I, just I think that's one hundred percent facts. Hey, forty. Do you know how big you are? The label's giving out forty M's. That's what I mean, bro. Like these some, okay. some different cats. Okay. These some different cats. Okay. Bro. Rap is rap is completely different, I guess. Let's talk about it. That's what he said. You think he he, uh, he put that out because of the the beef? Because the baby and them said they made two M's. Yeah. Okay. This is all calculated, man. And Dirk won. So far, just yeah, from, no, from and, the album and Dirk's album is. Dirk's album is way better than that shit that came out. Yeah, man. <clears throat> I now, love YB and the baby. You, right. You can't compare it, but I know what you mean. Just anyways, like, oh yeah, Dirk, y'all niggas not touching Dirk. The baby said he got a solo album coming out. Okay. I that will be comparable. <laughs> I don't really care about the baby, man. But no, that's you you understand. Um, I mean, like you saying the right shit, like you can compare it. It's gonna be compared regardless. Can the baby make you care? Me? Yeah. No. There's nothing the baby can do? No. Okay. What if his tracks are like, you can't imagine his tracks being good enough for you to care? Where I'm just like a 100% full fledged, the baby, like, maybe oh, passing maybe. his music around? No, never. No, nah, I don't pass his music. <laughs> 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 nah, I said I said some tracks out from the, uh, the joint tape, so I'm capping. Um, I'm trying to think. Like, what if he begins a promo run with an amazing single? Bro, I'm gonna listen to it, but I'm not a super big fan of the baby yeah, fam. Yeah, all right. How many songs are you playing back from the tape? Are you playing back any? No, no. I need to actually listen to it again. Yeah, same. But it's the not- baby still gets mad replay from me, like on older I know. albums, I know. like the My Brother's Keeper. I'm playing albums. I mean, I'm playing songs on that album back yeah. and Baby on Baby and Kirk. You remember when he said Kirk was gonna be uh. This generation's Carter Three. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like some bullshit to me. Damn, that's crazy. Y'all rappers really be getting that shit off. You think he would say that today? Yeah. Do you hear what the what he just said? <laughs> <laughs> he will say anything, dog. So you had to stop from cussing. <laughs> Cause I was about to go off, bro. <laughs> yeah, I lucky um, got mad, fam. No, that's crazy. I don't think. Uh, I don't think we had anything else. I got a couple more things, bro. You seen that picture of <laughs> Pooh Yeah, no, I did, see, I, I did see Pooh Shiesty. Uh, yeah. Why can't I talk, bro? <laughs> I did see Pooh Shiesty uh, in the pen. I said that boy look, bros. look war ready. When is his trial? When? Yeah. I have no idea. And should idea. Melly be going to trial this month? Melly? Bro, Melly's supposed to be going to trial since 2019. So. I think Melly goes to trial either this month or next month. And if it ain't that month, it's the month after that. And if it's not that month. <laughs> I really was listening to you for a second. <laughs> no. And I said, oh, this nigga fucking with me. 
No, nah, they fucking with him. That's what they keep telling him about his trial. <laughs> he's like, I go tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> Wait a minute. What day is it? Stupid ass little boy. <laughs> you going the thirteenth? Uh, okay, nah. But he should be going this month, I believe. And if it's not this, <laughs> they told him February twenty ninth. <laughs> And it's not a leap year. That nigga's still waiting. <laughs> and it's not a leap year. <laughs> bro. All right, man. Oh, shit, bro. Was that, was that it? The other yeah, thing with Pooh Shiesty? Uh, that was it. All right, man. I think that's it. Yes, sir. Episode 123 of the yes, Rise sir. and Grind podcast. It's your boy, Roger. Yes, sir. Young Carl, we checking out. All right, man. We out.